So we're going to start this class uh, in a seated position on your mat with your legs straight out in front of you. Bring your hands by your side, palms flat on the ground, and then press into the palms slightly, lifting the front of your chest. Roll your shoulder heads back a little bit. So looking straight ahead, tuck your chin towards your throat. Try and just create as much length down the front and the back of the body as you can. If you need for your knees to be bent to create this, if you're feeling a little bit round in the lower back, then go ahead and bend them. Otherwise, just find whatever shape you can in your body. Lifting up through the chest and taking a nice big deep breath in. Open your mouth and sigh it out. And two more of those. Inhale. And nice big exhale. Just taking a couple of moments at the start of your class to maybe just forget about everything else that you've been doing today. Clear your mind, reset the body, tune into how you feel right here on your mat in this moment. And then you set an intention for the next 40 minutes of your class. Okay, and then on your next inhale, open your eyes, bring your arms out to either side and stretch up towards the ceiling. Once you're there, hook your thumbs together and reach the fingertips up, lifting the front of the chest as you go, creating as much length down the two sides of the body as you can. And then from there on your next exhale, gently start to bow forward. You can keep your thumbs hooked together if you like, or you can separate the hands and just let them come to rest on your shins or your ankles, your feet, wherever they naturally find and bow forward. We're just using these first few moments as a warm-up, so don't feel you need to go right to the edge of your limit. Find a comfortable amount of stretch, particularly if you're practicing in the morning, and just meet your body wherever you are, wherever you're at for now. And then from that position, hook your thumbs again, reach forward and come all the way back up to where you started and allow the arms to drop all the way down to your sides. From there, bend your left knee in towards you. Hug that knee in with your right elbow crease. Turn to the left, prop yourself up on the left fingertips and look back over that shoulder. So we're gonna be doing a lot of different twists in this class. Uh, this is the first one, just starting to unravel the spine a little bit, get a nice opening across the front of the chest. Try and keep both your sitting bones down. And then if you want to progress this by pressing the elbow against the top of the knee to get another few degrees, go ahead and do that. And then slowly return your head to the center, return your shoulders to the center and straighten that leg. Same thing on the other side, bending your right knee towards you. Start by hugging it into your elbow crease. Take your right hand behind you, lift the chest first and then turn and look back over your right shoulder. If you're leaning to one side, try and level your pelvis. And then if you need another little bit of leverage, press the elbow against the top of the knee for that last few degrees of rotation. And just use these first few stretches to notice if one side feels tighter than the other, or if there's any areas that are a little bit stiffer than normal. And then slowly return all the way back to the center. And then from there, take your feet out into a wide-legged stance, even wider than your mat if you're comfortable. So I'll face the camera. <clears throat> and turn towards your right leg. Take your left hand onto the right leg, so on the outside of the thigh or the outside of the knee, and then just lean that shoulder towards the opposite side. You can allow that left hand, or right hand, to come all the way up and over, reaching for the opposite foot, if that's comfortable, or you can bring it behind your head bending at the elbow, wherever you're comfortable. So just finding a big open side stretch down your right hand side. And then slowly come all the way back up to the center. Then from there, turn and face your left leg. Take your right hand across your body. So you're holding onto the outside of the thigh just to create that little bit of rotation. And then you're leaning towards the uh, right leg. Your left arm is going to go up and over again, or it'll come behind your ear if you do that on the first side. And just find some space all the way down the side of the body. And 
and then slowly come all the way back up to the center and back to the middle. From there we're going to transition onto hands and knees and from there into your first downward dog. So tuck your toes, bring your hands to the top of your mat, lift your knees, walk your feet to the back and stretch it out into your downward dog. Take a couple of breaths here. Just going through some of the alignment points in your downward dog. So the feet are parallel. Your sitting bones form the top of your triangle and the action is pushing away from the hands down into the heels. Keep a little bend in your knees if it makes that a little bit more comfortable. Line your ears up with the insides of your arms and root down through all five knuckles of either hand. Okay, from there, look forward between your hands and slowly walk your feet all the way up to the top of the mat. Once they're there, inhale, lift the chest, exhale and bow forward. Inhale, roll yourself all the way back up to standing, reaching up with the hands, join the two palms in prayer and bring them down the midline to rest on the center of your chest. So this is going to be our starting position. We're going to do the same or a similar sequence a number of times, adding on and changing it up each time. So the very starting pose we're going to use is the revolved chair pose. So I always like to do this with my feet closer together than the regular chair. So bring your feet in closer to the midline. You can even squeeze your inner thighs if you like. And then from there, take your two arms straight up and sit back into your chair pose. So the action is on sending your hips back rather than allowing your knees to come forward. So you're kind of imagining there's a stool behind you and you're trying to lower your hips, your pelvis down into that stool. Once you have that happening, lift your chest a little bit more, reach through your fingertips. Make sure that you can see all 10 toes in your chair pose. See if you can get your hips a bit lower, put your chest a bit higher. Go take another breath in and then come all the way back up to standing. Bring your hands back into prayer on the center of your chest. From there, we're going to add our twist. So keeping our hands in prayer on the center of our chest, sit your hips back into your chair pose again. Lift the chest a little bit and then start to twist to your left, bringing your right elbow onto the outside of your left knee. So you might need to take a little bit of time to snuggle it down there. Once you have something to push against, use that to revolve your chest to the left. So you're trying to once again line up your thumbs with your sternum. Now what will tend to happen to get you into that position and what's happening to me is that my right knee is shifting forward, my left knee is shifting back. So try and pull that right leg back in line with the left one. Squeeze the knees together to help you do that. And you should find a little bit of extra rotation there. You're going to take another breath, see if you can get the hips down a bit lower, chest up even within that twist. And then slowly undo your rotation and press to stand. Okay, coming into the second side, breathe in there, and on your exhale, sitting the hips back into your chair, again imagining that you're trying to lower them behind you, and then twisting to the right this time, take your left elbow onto the outside of your right knee, revolve the ribcage to meet the thumbs, and then check on the knees, pull that left knee back in line with the right knee, and you should immediately feel that little bit of extra stretch, extra resistance in your twist. Try and push the two heels of the hands against each other. So your forearms line up. There's a 90 degree angle at your wrists. And you're breathing. And three, two, and one. Undo the twist. From there, straighten the two legs and fold. We're going to go through a regular vinyasa here. Inhale, lifting the chest. Exhale, plant the hands and step back into your plank pose. Inhale. Exhale to lower yourself all the way down. Point the toes, hug the elbows in. Inhale, cobra pose. And then exhale back to down the dog. From there, soften the knees, look between the two hands, walk or step or hop back to the top of the mat. Inhale and lift the chest. Exhale, fold in. Inhale to roll yourself all the way back up and exhale hands back down into the center. All right, so we're going to add on to that sequence a little bit now. So hands in the center of your chest in the prayer position, breathe in. As you exhale, sit your hips back into your prayer. Inhale there and then exhale, twist. Get the right elbow onto the outside of the left knee. Keep the two knees aligned. 
come into your revolve prayer. Now, here's the little tricky bit. Look down at your left foot and start to transfer all your weight into the left foot. When you feel you have your balance, tuck your right heel up behind you. So you're balancing on that left leg, still maintaining your shape. Now start to straighten the right leg all the way back and land on the ball of the foot at the back of your mat, gently bringing the knees down. Very good. So you're in your long low lunge, still maintaining your revolve prayer position. If you need to creep that back a little bit further back, if, it's, if there's more room, do that, lunging the left knee forward, still in your twist. Good, from here, undo the twist, fingertips down to the top of the mat, and then bring the hips back and fold over the front leg. You can pull the toes back or keep the foot flat if you prefer. And then lunging forward again, lifting the chest for a moment. And then pick up the back leg, step it all the way forward. Inhale and lift the chest. Exhale and fold. Inhale to roll all the way back up. And exhale, hands down onto the center of your chest. Good, getting ready for the second round. Inhale there. On your exhale, sitting the hips back into your chair. Breathe in. And then exhale to twist to the right. Left elbow onto the outside of the right knee. Line the knees up so that the pelvis stays in the midline. Find your twisted prayer. And then look down and focus on your right foot. And visualize all the weight leaning into that right foot. So that the left foot becomes lighter and lighter. And you're able to lift it off the mat. Now, in your own time, extend that left leg behind you, straightening the knee, and gently bring the toes down into the mat and lower the knee down behind you. Coming into your long, low lunge, still in your revolved prayer position. If there's any more room to get the front foot and the back knee further apart, you can edge them away. And then from here, undo your rotation, fingertips to the mat, Shift your hips back, fold over the front leg. And then coming forward again. Lift the back knee, step that foot forward. Inhale, straighten the legs, look up. Exhale and fold. Inhale to roll, slowly back up. Joining the palms in prayer above your head and bring them down the midline. Okay, so adding on a little bit more from there. Inhale, reaching the two arms up. Exhale, bring them down, and as you do that, sit your hips back into your prayer. From here, twisting to the left again, bringing your right elbow onto the outside of that knee, coming into your revolve prayer. We're going to start the same way, so you get another chance to practice. Look down at your left foot. Start to lean into the left foot. Tuck the right heel up underneath you. Extend the leg back this time, land on the ball of the foot, but keep your knee lifted. So you're coming into a long lunge, back knee lifted. Once you're there, you can make any adjustments you need to to complete the shape of the pose. Keep that back knee pulling in. Left knee directly over your left ankle, and you're in that revolved prayer position from here. Give yourself a couple of breaths to feel the pose. Good. Now, keeping the two palms against each other, simply lift your upper body off the front leg and undo your twist so you're in your high lunge. From here, we're going to go into a warrior through three, keeping our hands in that same position. So once again, look down at the left foot, but now look past the left foot. Lean all your weight onto that leg and try and lift the back leg up in one movement, coming into a T-shape between your body and your left leg. Use the glutes of the right leg to lift that heel, Keep the chin tucked to you, looking down, palm pressing against palm. One more breath here. And then from here, separate the hands, bring them down onto the mat in front of you, or even off your mat, and fold over your standing leg. Allow your back leg to lift as much as you can, coming into a standing splits, and that may, may look different for everybody. One more inhale. And then gently float the right foot all the way back down onto the mat on your exhale. Inhale, lifting the chest. Exhale to fold. Inhale to roll yourself all the way back up. And exhale, hands down the midline. Good. Getting ready for the second side. 
Inhale, take those hands up. And then exhale, coming down into your, your chair. Breathe in again. And then exhale, twisting to the right. So left elbow onto the outside of the right knee, coming into your revolved chair. Look down at the right foot. Lean your weight into that foot. Allow the left heel to lift off the ground. And then take that leg all the way to the back of the mat and gently place the ball of the foot down, keeping the knee lifted, coming into your long lunge. Find your shape here. Make any adjustments you need to. Look back over your right shoulder. And then keeping the hands in that same position, take the front of the body and lift it off the front of the right lap thigh and lift up into your high lunge. Keeping that back leg straight. Prepare for your next pose. <coughs> so visualize it. Look down past your right foot. Lean your weight onto the front leg and try and bring that left leg up off the ground in the same action you do as you lean forward. Chin tuck, so you're trying to make a 90 degree angle between your body, your standing leg and your back leg. Try and get the pelvis level if you can feel that. Keep looking down just in front of the right foot. One more break. And then from there, release the hands down onto the ground. Fold over your standing leg, lift the back leg up behind you, standing splits. One more breath, and then gently float the left foot down alongside the right. Inhale, lifting the chest. Exhale to fold. Inhale to roll all the way back up. And exhale, hands down. Okay, so last round of this sequence. Starting at the top of the mat again. Inhale, take the arms up. And then exhale, bring them back into the front of the chest. Sit down into your chair. Breathe in. Exhale, twisting to the left, right elbow on the outside of the left knee. Good, take another breath here. Look down at your left foot. Lean the weight into your left foot. Take your right foot off the ground. Extend it behind you and land on the back of the mat, coming into your long lunge in your revolved prayer position. Keeping your hands in prayer, undo your twist and lift your upper body off the front leg, coming into your long lunge. From there, take the two arms up above your head. Keep the palms pressing against each other and lean back. As you lean back in the upper body, lunge forward with that left leg. Take another breath here, and then slowly come forward, this time separating the hands to bring your right hand down onto the mat, just on the inside of the left foot, and the left arm straight up into the air. So an easier twist, more open twist. Okay. All right, so preparing for this next one, we're gonna go into a side plank on your right hand side, so that back foot, is going to roll onto its outside edge. But before you do that, bring this top hand down and take hold of your left big toe with your index finger, middle finger and thumb. So you've got hold of this front foot. We're going to bring it with us. Now roll the back foot onto its outside edge. Keep the foot really active, keep the knee straight. Lean into the right hand and when you have your balance, bring this left foot off the ground with you. Now this might be as far as you go, just finding your balance there. Or you can really open up into that pose, lifting up with the left foot, pressing down with the right side of the body, finding any shape that works for you today. Keep breathing. Shaking is okay. See so if you can lift that right hip a bit more. And when you're ready to come out of the pose, look down on the inside of the hand and gently, slowly bring that left foot all the way back down. Well done. From here, we're going to step forward into our standing split. So lean the weight into your left foot. Walk your hands further out and fold over the standing leg, lifting the right leg up behind you. And then slowly place the right foot all the way back down on the mat. Inhale, lift your chest for a moment. Exhale and fold. Inhale to roll all the way back up. And exhale, 
hands down the centre line. Okay, second side. Inhale, reaching the arms up. And exhale, sitting down into your chair. Twisting to your right. Bring your left elbow on the outside of the right knee. Revolve chair. Take a breath. Look down at your right foot. Lean the weight into it. Pick your left foot up and reach it to the back of the mat. Landing on the ball of the foot. Coming back to your twist once you're there. From there, keeping the palms in prayer. Under your twist, come back to center. Lifting the chest. Take your arms all the way up above your head. Palms still pressing against palm and lean back in the upper body as you lunge forward with the right leg. Hold it for another breath. And then slowly return to center, bringing your left hand down onto the mat on the inside of your right foot, turning your chest to the right, reaching up with that right arm. And hold this nice open shape for as long as you need. You know what comes next now. Preparing for it, make sure that your weight-bearing shoulder, your left one, is nice and strong. So you're not sinking into it, you're pushing the ground away with that side. And then when you're ready for your side plank, bring this top hand down, take hold of your right big toe, with your index, middle, finger and thumb. Roll onto the outside edge of the left foot, and when you have your balance, pick the foot off the ground. And again, you may stay there, or you may open out into whatever shape your body allows, or you feel you need in this moment, it doesn't matter. You should be alone at your house, no one's watching you, you're not in the class, so take as many attempts as you like to find the pose you want to do. And when you're ready to come down, prepare for your descent, look down where you want the foot to land, and gently bring it back down onto the mat. From here, stepping forward into your standing splits, walk your hands off the mat, fold over the standing leg, lift up through the left heel, And then gently float that foot down to the ground. Inhale, lifting the chest. Exhale, fold. And then this time, place your two palms down on the ground. Step your feet all the way back to your plank. Inhale and plank. Exhale and slowly lower down onto your tummy. Inhale, cobra. Or full upper dog if you like. And exhale, back down. Sitting back into a child's pose. Okay, and then coming back up onto hands and knees, tuck your toes, lift your hips, come into your downward dog. And then take your right foot into the air if you need a little bit of momentum. Step it through between the two hands. Spin the left heel down. Bring yourself up into your warrior two. Facing the right or leading with the right side of the body, should I say. Drop your shoulders down. Lift your chest. Gaze down your right middle finger. And then from there, bring your left hand in front of your tummy and hold on to your shirt or your pants just near your right hip crease. From there, reverse your warrior, so lean back, lean to the left, take that right arm up and over your ear. Inhale, come all the way back up, stretch out the arms again. And now take your front hand across the front of the tummy, hold on to your shirt on the other side, again just near the front of the hip, and then lean to the right. With this one, you can actually lean on that front leg if you like, or drop down just on the inside of it, and reach past your ear with your right hand. And then bring yourself all the way back up into your warrior two. From there, straighten the front leg, and then turn the two feet until they're parallel. Bring your hands onto your hips. So you're now facing the long side of your mat. 
lifting your chest. Bring your arms behind your back, interlace your fingers, squeeze your shoulder blades together, lift the chest, and then gently bow forward, allowing yourself to drop to whatever depth you're comfortable with, really trying to allow the crown of your head to drop towards the ground, and the arms to gently fall away from the body. And then bring the arms back towards your spine and gently lift yourself. Sorry about that. All the way back up. Okay, turning back to the top of the mat, hands down, step your right foot back, come into your downward dog. Inhale, coming forward into your plank. Exhale to lower. Inhale, curve or upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. From there, take your left leg into the air if you need a little bit of a momentum, and then step it through between the two hands, spin the right heel down, make your way into your warrior two on the opposite side. Dropping the shoulders, lifting the chest, gazing down your left middle finger. Always take a couple of breaths to settle into every pose before you flow. So then taking your back arm, the right one in my case, Cross the front of your tummy, hold onto your shirt, just near your hip crease, and lean back to reverse your warrior in a variation. You can look up towards the ceiling if it's comfortable on your neck. Keep lunging forward with that left knee. Good, inhale. Exhale to spread out into your warrior again. Then taking your front hand across your tummy, hold onto the shirt on the other side. Lean to the left. And allow the right arm to reach and find that length all the way down the side of the body. And then using those muscles on the side of the body, bring yourself all the way back up to your warrior two again. Once again, straighten that front leg, turn the feet until they're parallel, bring the two hands onto the hips. And then for this one, keep a tiny bend in the knees and drop your hands down onto the ground in front of you. And then walk them forward as if your upper body was in the downward dog position. So spread the palms and drop your head so that your ears line up with the insides of your arms. So you're just trying to reach your hands as far forward as you can, but keep the weight on your feet. Now take your right hand, and I'm gonna have to do this my way so my right and your left will be mixed up, but you keep concentrating on what you're doing. Take your right hand underneath your body and wrap it around the outside of your left uh, leg, just below the knee. And then bend that left knee and lunge to that side. And then straighten that leg and bend the other side and lunge the opposite way. Inhale, come back to the center and undo the hand. So placing the right hand back on the ground, take the left hand underneath you, twist and hold around the outside of your right shin. And then bend your right shin, oh, sorry, bend your right knee. So you find that lunge down the inside of the left leg. Then come back to the center and lunge the opposite way. Now you'll find the stretch more on the outside of the shoulder. Good, come back to the middle, replace the two hands, and then slowly walk them in. You can bring them as close in as you like, and if you can walk them through the two hands, place the palms as flat as you can and bend your elbows to 90 degrees. So you're taking your arms through your legs towards whatever's behind you, trying to allow the crown of your head to drop down onto the ground. If there's a little bit of room to take those legs slightly further apart, feel free to do that. and then slowly walk the hands back through, and then heel toe your feet all the way back into the middle, and slowly roll yourself all the way back up into standing. From there, I'm gonna invite you to sit down on your mat, taking your legs out in front of you, <clears throat> and coming back to where we started. So just a nice, easy forward fold over the two legs. Notice if it feels different to the one that you started your class with.
and then slowly roll yourself all the way down onto your back. Bring your right knee into your chest, straighten out the left leg. And then reach down the inside of your right leg. And once again, hold onto your big toe with your thumb, your middle finger, and your index finger. And if that's as far as you can get, then that's where you stay. If there's any room to straighten that leg a little bit, you can do so. Your left hand can just rest by your side, or you can hold onto the front of the left thigh to help keep it down. And then take this leg out to the side. So reach out to the right hand side with your arm and with your foot. Coming into a very similar shape that you were in your side plank earlier. And then come back up to the center and pop that foot down. Straightening the right leg, bring the left knee into the chest. Reach on the inside of the leg so that you can grab hold of your big toe. And if you can't reach that, of course, hold on to anything that you're in contact with. You maybe stay there, or if there's room to straighten that leg a little bit, do so. And then take this leg out to the same side. Okay, and just opening into that hip, into the adductors and the hamstrings, finding a similar shape to what you did on your side earlier. And then bring yourself all the way back into the center and take that leg down. So bending the two knees, we're gonna come into a pose that's slightly awkward for some people. So you're just gonna make whatever shape your, your hips and your knees allow you to. So I want you to bring both your knees in towards your chest and then cross your right knee over your left knee. So at this stage, if just getting the knee over the top of the other one is enough, then that's where you stay and you'll just hug the knees in towards you. If there's a little bit of room to maneuver and this doesn't tweak your knees, then lift your feet a little bit so that there's a, a greater angle at the knees, so more of a 90 degree angle. And then reach out for your right foot with your left hand, they're on the same side, and left foot with your right hand. Try and hold underneath the heel or the Achilles tendon. And then use your hands to separate the feet out to either side, as if you're trying to spread the feet wider. Once you've done that, maybe pull the legs in towards you a little bit more. So you're essentially externally rotating both of your hips by using the lever of your foot and your hand. Again, if this causes any discomfort in your knees, then obviously go back to where you were feeling the most comfortable. And gently release the legs and place the feet back down onto the mat. Okay, but take a couple of breaths there before we do the second side. Just notice how the body feels. And then bringing the knees back in towards you, this time switching. So left knee on top of right knee. And if that's a stretch, then you just hold it there. You keep yourself in the shape that's most comfortable. Otherwise, you try and reach up for the underneath of the ankle, the heel, the Achilles tendon area. And then use your hands to draw your feet a little bit wider, putting your knees in towards your chest at the same time. Bearing in mind one side might feel very different to the other side. That's often to do with, with how we sit. If you cross your legs the same way habitually when you're sitting at your desk or on the couch, one hip can often be a little bit more restrictive than the other. And then release the legs, bring the feet back down onto the ground. Okay, from here we're going to come into a supported bridge pose. So bringing your heels in behind the thighs, arms down by your side, start by simply just lifting your hips up into the air, and then roll to the right and squeeze your left shoulder blade in underneath you. Then roll to the left and do the same with the right arm. So that you bring the two hands close enough that you can interlace your fingers, and the action of the arms is, is, is on hugging in towards the midline, straightening the elbows and squeezing together. And so it's a supported bridge because you have your arms to support the weight of the middle of your body. And the emphasis is on lifting the chest more so that it feels like there's less weight in the feet and you can even let the hips drop a little bit compared to where you normally would in your bridge. So really we're thinking of this as a chest opener. And then release 
release the hands when you're ready to roll down and bring your hips all the way back down onto the mat. Put your knees in towards you. And then one final twist to end the class before our Shavasana. Bring your arms out to either side. And if you're happy just to take the legs over to the left, keeping them stacked one on top of the other, that's a nice option. Or you can cross your right knee over the left and take both legs to the left. And find whatever rotation gives you the best sense of stretch. Try and keep the chest open, shoulder blades down. And give yourself five long, deep breaths in and out in that pose. So you make your way back into the center and recreate the same shape on the other side. Finally, you can take yourself down into your position for your Shavasana. And even if you're working at home on your own, try and give yourself a couple of minutes to do this. Just give yourself time to lay out on your mat. You don't have to think about anything. You don't have to do anything else. Allow yourself the chance to fully relax, fully let go. Give your mind the opportunity to let go of everything else that's been floating around and try and just follow the example of the body as it settles down on your mat. Release the muscles around your jaw, your mouth, your tongue. Unclench your eyes and your forehead. I'm going to stop the video. Feel free to stay there for as long as you can.